All right, great morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're going to go ahead and open up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you for waking us up on this morning, starting us in our right mind, oh God, giving us the use and activities of our limbs, God, just allowing us to see another day, to be in your presence, to be in your grace, to have another chance, Lord God, to get it right, oh God. Lord, we just ask you right now that you forgive us for our sins and our righteousness, everything that we did, unknowing, knowing or unknowingly, that unpleasing in your eyesight, God, we ask that you wash us and cleanse us with your precious Lord God, then we ask, Lord God, on today, Lord God, as I bring forth your word, oh God, that in the be my words, but your words only, Lord God. I pray, oh God, that I decrease as you increase in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that the word is for, Lord God, that I be receptive, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray, oh Lord God, every soul that desires to be here and sit and not make it, oh God. We pray, Lord God, for everyone that will hear this message, Lord God, through the internet, Lord God. That they be set for God and then healed, delivered, and set free, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you. Bless this service, God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. All right. So, the topic of the lesson, it was crazy because I'm saying crazy because. That's how I'm God is not crazy, but he do stuff that blow your mind. So he had already given me a lesson and I had already started studying it. And then maybe like three days ago, he gave me, I would say, divine revelation for myself because somebody else might have already gotten a revelation, of course, of a scripture. And he was like, that's that's what I want you to teach the people. Or, you know, tell the people. So I was like, okay. And then I got so excited while studying. But it's a verse that we already know that we have heard a million and one times. But it excited me so much in my spirit, man, when he gave it to me. Because it was just like, okay, thank you. You know, thank you, God. So what we, the, uh, the title of the message would be Seek Ye First. So, and we're coming from, of course, Matthew 6 and 33. And we all know the scripture, but we'll go ahead and turn, uh, we'll go ahead and turn to the scripture. Hallelujah. I'm just so excited because it's just in the study and it's just. God is amazing how you can read over something a million times and then for him to make it so profound is just it's it's amazing. Matthew six and thirty-three. Ma'am. Oh. And it reads, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, what exactly does this scripture mean? And again, like I've said, we heard it a million times over and over again. But what is God really saying? So we're going to kind of break this scripture down. Now he starts off by saying, but. So but means or is used to introduce a phrase or a clause contrasting with what has already been mentioned. So in this scripture, before we starting at 33, but in the previous scriptures, he he mentioned some things that we would be in need of. So when he got down to this scripture, he started off with but. And then he proceeds to say. Seek. But seek. So for the things that we mentioned before, I'm going to stop you and tell you what you need to do. So he says, seek. God is a tree. He's just so strategic, y'all. And I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that he started that off with, but I, I tend to pay attention to God's wordings because words are so important. Like we can say something and the person think, well, why she said that? What she mean? Because words are powerful. They have meaning. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. And I love the way God, he, he know what he doing. He say words that you'd be like, well, why he didn't say that word? Or why he didn't say that? But it was for a reason. Okay, so. So then he says, seek ye. So what does seek mean? Seek means to attempt to find 
or a temp or desire to obtain or achieve. So he says, but seek. So attempt, attempt to find or attempt to obtain what? He said, then he says first. So we know what first means, but to break it down, it means coming before all others in time or in order. Foremost in position, rank, or importance. So he's saying, but what I need you to do is first try to find before anything else, before you do anything else, before you ask for anything, let me be the first thing that comes to mind. Let me be your first choice in everything that you do. First, this is what you need to do because he says, seek ye first, okay? Then he says the kingdom of God. To me, the kingdom of God means anything pertaining to heaven, God, and his son. So he's saying, but first, before you do anything, seek me. Seek Jesus. Seek anything that has to do with heaven. First, before anything. Because sometimes we get stuff out of order. We, we go last to Jesus a lot of times. Last to God in prayer. But he's giving us instructions. And it says, and his righteousness, meaning his attributes to me. His righteousness means his attributes because the word righteousness means acting in accord with the divine or moral law, free from guilt or sin. And we know that God is free from guilt and sin so that righteousness means his attributes. So seek to be righteous. Seek after God. Seek after the things. Seek to have a pure heart, a, a sinless life. Seek to find out how we need to live according to God's word, what he wants us to do, what he wants us to do in the day. Seek him first. He'll give us instructions. He'll give us, he's so divine that he'll give us what exactly, he know what's in our closet. He gave us the money or whoever he blessed to give it to us. He knows what's in our closet. He's so strategic. He'll, this is what I want you to wear today. You got a meeting. You got an interview. You're going to work. This is what I want you to put on. You put on those black shoes with that red vest, with that, with the orange pants. Please don't dress like that, but I'm just saying. <laughs> He'll give you. That's how, but, but we have to seek him. And I'm not just talking, y'all. I know this for sure. He'll do it. Um, One of my, uh, my um, ex-sister-in-law, uh, when I used to tell her about God all the time, she didn't believe me. But I'll still tell her, I give her scriptures or whatever, and she'll say, okay, maybe one day I find out for myself. And I said, and one day you will. And she called me on the phone, this was some years ago, and she said, you was right, you was right, you know, it's true. She said, no, I'm seeking God for everything. I'm seeking him for what I need to wear. I'm seeking him for this. I go, and I'm like, hallelujah. God telling the child what to wear in the morning. He'll do it. But we got to seek him first. We got to seek him first as he instructs us. And then he says, all these things shall be added unto you. Now I looked at that word shall. Because he didn't say all these things will be added. He said all these things shall be added. So the word shall, which is, is expressing the future tense. So if he said it shall mean shall be added, that means in the future once you do what I did, what I told you to do, which is seek me, then I'll add these things. He didn't say immediately. He didn't say right now, but there's something that I need to do, need you to do. Because when you're looking for your keys, do you find them automatically? A lot of times you lost your keys. You don't find them all at once. You get the seeking and searching. We lose different things. You know, we're trying to find out. You know, different things. Even when we studying, we don't get it in one walk. We got to go searching. So he's not telling you, oh, just because you went before me one time, boom, you're going to get it. You got to seek me. Yeah. You got to seek. It's, it's a diligence to seeking. It's not something that happens at once. We got to we gotta find out. We got to seeking to me. That's a part of love. We got to love on the Lord. That's a part of loving. Let me love him. Let me find out what his love is so I can possess it. Let me embrace him. 
So what we're going to do today is just kind of find out some things, some ways that he wants to seek, um, what wants us to seek him, some ways that we can seek him, and a, a couple of scriptures on seeking him. Find out what God is saying about seeking ye. First, we can seek him, we can seek his presence. First Chronicles 16 and 11. Seeking his presence. And then somebody get it before me, of course. You can feel free to read it. First Chronicles 16 and 11. So he's letting us know to seek me, but why? Because you're looking for his strength. This is a part of seeking. You know, and we got to seek him continuously. We just talked about that. You can't just do it once. We got to seek his face continually because we need something. We want something. Not even just for material, not just for material things, but for spiritual growth. So we have to seek him. What happens when we seek him? Matthew 7 and 7. Matthew 7 and 7. Matthew 7 and 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. So he's saying, when you seek me, guess what you're going to do? You're going to find me. So he's not telling us to do something. Oh, y'all seek me and, and nothing's going to happen. When you seek me, you shall find me. He said, if you knock on the door, it shall be opened unto you. If you ask, it shall be given unto you. But you have to seek. That's the beginning of everything that starts with God. Everything that we want, the beginning of salvation, the beginning of everything that we could ever want from God is seeking him first and his kingdom. So we have to seek him sincerely. Jeremiah 29 and 13. We can't just go, oh, I want something for God. So let me just go ask him real quick, you know, and, and see what I can get out of him. No, we have to sincerely seek him. Jeremiah 29 verse 13. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So he's letting us know again with your heart, sincerely seek me, desire me, desire. If you want something from me, let me know that you have a pure heart and you're not just coming to use me, but seek me with your whole heart, with everything that's in you, try to find me because it's good things. It's good things when you know the Lord. It's, 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 it's such a awesome feeling to know him to to have sought the lord and to find him is amazing also we have to draw to him james 4 and 8 you know we gotta when you when you first when you on a date while somebody getting it read it for me um when you on the date you know you excited you know, you go on your first day, you all excited, you bubbly, you know, and after your first date, if it go well, what you going to do? You start drawing to that person. If you like them, four and eight, you like them. So you start drawing to that person. You start getting close to them. You're trying to see what this person is about. Vice versa, the man and the woman. So this is the same way we go. We have to draw to him according to James four and eight, which reads, come near to God and he will come near to Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. So he's letting us know, draw to me, and I'm going to draw to you. So you try to get closer to me, I'm going to get closer to you. The more you get in your word, the more you study, the more you read, the closer I'm going to get to you. You'll the, We'll get into relationship. So he wants us to... So he wants us to draw into him. And, and leave... 
Leave the stem where it is. Sorry about that. Amen. So uh, then he also wants us to pray. We have to pray because how can we be in relation? How can we draw? How can we do anything? How can we seek him if we don't pray? which he commands us to do. He wants us to pray without ceasing. Uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Mama. Yes. Mama. Mm-hmm. 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Mama. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Amen. So he's letting us know that for things to happen, you, my people, you have to humble yourselves and pray and seek. This is what we're talking about. He says, seek my face. You have to go after me. You have to get in my presence. That is what he's telling us to do. Turn from my wicked ways. He said, then and only then will I hear from heaven and forgive your sins and heal the land. And God was, God actually brought this scripture before me this morning in prayer, thinking about COVID. He was like, people wonder why, it, it, it can't be just one. You know, sometimes we got to seek him as a union, as a body, because we are a body of Christ. You know, everybody, oh, I can't wait for COVID to be over. I can't wait to be for COVID to be over. But are we seeking him? Are we just saying, oh, Lord, please bless it to be over? Are we just saying it one time? Seeking is not a one-time thing. It's a continual thing. We have to seek him. He said, because this says right here, God is not lying. He said, if we seek him. But he said, if my people, us as a body of Christ, have to get together and begin to diligently seek God. And he said, then. Because why has this stuff come upon us? Because there's some wickedness in the land. There's some things that's going on that God is not pleased with. So then here comes COVID. He said, but then when my people, when y'all begin to humble yourselves, humble ourselves and seek his face, then and only then. So I just thought that was so awesome that he gave that to me, you know, because we can ask God for something, but we just asking him and just expecting it to happen. And sometimes that's what we do. We'll go, oh, Lord, please bless, you know. You know, bless my relationship or bless my husband. Or Lord, please bless my boss to stop acting crazy. Amen. You got to work expecting your boss to change just like that. Yeah. What? That's not what the word is telling us. So this is why I thank God for breaking this down. He also wants us to wait. We impatient people. We microwave people. We want it just like that. Isaiah 40 and 31. And this is all a part of seeking. In our seeking, we have to do these things. Isaiah 40 and 31. And it reads, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk in that faith. So he's letting us know if we just wait, he going to renew our strength. We get a little tired in the waiting while we seeking him for what it is that we want. We get a little impatient. We get a little tired. But he says he's going to renew your strength. You're going to mount up as wing, with wings as eagles. That means you're going to be strong. And then you shall run and not be weary and walk in that faith. So you're going to move through this thing smoothly in your way. While you waiting on it to happen, once it come about, it's going to be like no time pass. It's going to be just like you got a friend and you and y'all close, 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 and you haven't seen this friend, friend in about 20 years. And as soon as you see them, y'all just get to talking, chattering, hugging, loving each other like no time pass. So he's letting us know just wait on him 
in your seeking way because he gonna get he gonna renew your strength uh brother was talking about it last night in bible study the children walking around for 40 years and disobedient and the lord i, I just thought that was amazing because i really hadn't just you know, you'll read it, but you hadn't got to the depths of the fact that they didn't have no swelling in their feet for 40 years. My feet be swelling sometimes walking on the job. <laughs> but God is letting us know he will take care of us, especially when it's something that has to do with him. If he told you to do something, he's going to make provision. In, your, in seeking him, we have to find our purpose. This is important that we find our purpose. What is it that God wants us to do? What is it that he has called us to do? Jeremiah 29 and 11. All right, you know, a lot of times we're seeking God for our purpose, but we're trying to find out what we want to do. But we need to find out what it is, seek him for what it is that he wants us to do. Because... We can be so off, you know, and we can start doing something thinking that, hey, this is what I want to do. I didn't start the Lord. Oh, okay, this is what I want to do. And it don't work because we hadn't really sought him and said, what do you want me to do? Not what is it that I want to do? Oh, I got these talents. So, you know, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Like I can just go start braiding hair because I, I think I'm just so good. I'm cold. I'm a beast. And I start braiding, and then next thing you know it, I can't afford my shop. But did I seek God to say, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Is this the path that you want me to take? You know, we have to seek him. Jeremiah 29 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. So the Lord is saying, when you seek me, you're going to find out that I know the plans I have for you. All you got to seek me to find out. Because my plans is going to give you an expected end. So in the end, we want to be successful, right? right? We. So he's letting us know that I'm going to give you just that. But I know the plan. I got it under control. You just need to come to me and find out what it is. And if we don't seek him, guess what? We're going to be going around in circles. Going around in circles because we're not going to know. We can't know unless we seek him. We need to read and study in our seeking. Because again, how can we know him if we don't read about him? If we don't study his ways? If we don't study his attributes? If we don't find out what he's like, what he did, what he wants us to do? How can we prosper? 2 Timothy 2 and 15. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. Yes. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and will correctly handle the word of truth. So he's saying study to show thyself approved. A workman rightly dividing the word. So if you don't study how you know that what you're reading and telling people about is really what God is saying. Because you haven't studied to show yourself approved. So that's what he's letting us know. We got to study. We got to get in our word so we can know him. So he can add these things to him. Studying is a part of that. Joshua, Joshua 1 and 8. And this is open, of course, if anybody. Joshua 1, verse 8. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Amen. So this is seeking. This is seeking. He already told us if you seek him and his righteousness, then all these things will be added unto you. So he's letting us know, read, read, read my law. Don't let it depart from your mouth, but meditate on it. Not just once, but day and night, day and night. 
that you may observe to do the, according to what's in it. So if we meditate on it, that we getting it down on the inside of us. And then so we got it down on the inside, then this becomes a, a everything everyday thing. So we, we know, we're observing to do what is written in so that he can then make our way prosperous. Next is people. This one was a good one. In, in, in seeking God, why people is a part of seeking God is that... Uh, let's go to the scriptures. Luke 15 and 16. Luke 15 and 16. Luke 15 and 16. The Bible says he longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. That's not what I want. And I went over this twice. And when he went out. Okay, so that's not what I want. It's 16. Okay, excuse me, 16 and 15. Thank you, God. Go ahead. Luke 16 and 15, the Bible says, And he said to them, You are the ones who justify yourselves in the eyes of men, but God knows your heart. What is highly valued among men is detestable in God's sight. So he's letting us know. You justifying yourself by what a man said. You justify yourself because cause Bob said, Girl, you, you sure do that well. You need to go, you need to go do this. You need to go that. You you done got pumped up. Oh, okay, yeah, I know how to do that. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go do that. Don't justify yourself by what men say. He said, because God knows your heart. That not might not even be something you want to do. But we listening to man, letting man pump us up, have us all crunk, smiling from ear to ear. He said, for that which is highly esteemed among man is abomination in the sight of God. So man could be telling you to do something that God just like, no, that's, that's not, that's not how we roll. That's not what I want you to do. So it's letting us know man to get you in trouble. So we not seeking man. We're not worried about what man has to say. People will get us in trouble. We have to seek God. Psalms 118 and 8. It says that it is better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in men. And we do that a lot of times. We trust men. Oh, I'm going to get such and such to help me with this. So I'm going to get such and such to help me with that. Oh, they they know it. Oh, they, they, they did this before. Let me go just because they did it and they were successful. And what they did don't mean you're going to be successful in listening to him because God might have you going in a different direction doing the same thing. Just because she know how to braid hair and she opened up a shop don't mean you got to follow, go and see. Let me see what you did, sis. So I can do it. God might want you in a whole nother direction. He might want you to go through some people that's going to have you and bless you to where you, you get a year's free yeah. of the shop opening. While she doing this type of braids, he might want you just doing this certain type of braiding because that's what's going to draw the people. So we can't follow, you can't put our trust in men. We have to put our trust in God. Proverbs 29 and 25. It says, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. 
them that's no fearing and worrying about nervous because we worrying about ooh, what they gonna say what they gonna think that puts us there in the way but if we just trust in god if we put our trust in god if we seek him for what it is that we want to do where it is that we want to go again what it is that we want to put on what it is that he will want us to do have us to do it's perfect because we ain't got to worry about no judgment from God. We ain't got to worry about God looking at us funny, you know. Mm, why she doing it like that? Because God told me to. So because I'm doing it like that, you might have a problem with it, but I'm going to be prosperous. Because I sought the Lord as he instructed me. That's why it's so important to get into this word. And some of these scriptures, y'all didn't even know the depths of in, until I began to study to study and, and see what God is requiring. Last one, Galatians 10, 1 and 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I had yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So it's telling us don't be men pleasers. People will get in the way when we are seeking God for what it is we want. We have to seek him or then that means that we're pleasing God. That means we're trying to serve people. That means what we're doing, we're doing for the people. So they can give us an applause. So they can give us a praise. So that they can give us a reward. Instead of getting what we need from God. And I'm going I'm, to I'm take it from God. Forget people. Because people, they get bored. And if you ain't doing it that way, they got complaints. They're worried. They, they talking about you, casting you down, making fun of you, mimicking you. They don't follow you no more, you know. But if you do it the right way, God's way. God's no matter of fact, it, it no matter if you do it the right way and you only have five customers. You know, in the business or you only have five people that watch you on, you know, YouTube or Facebook or whatever. But that's those five people that you're pouring into. that's going to be a blessing to you as well as you being a blessing to them. And then God will add because it's his timing. We might want him. We want, you know, we pray at uh, Brother Young a trillion followers, a million followers in God's timing. Because he said, if you seek me, all these things will be added to you. No, we don't need a trillion followers, but that's what we want. And he says in his word, he'll give us the desires of his heart, of our hearts. But he said, it shall be. We're back to that word. It shall be. Not when we want it, but when when it's time. So the last thing, the uh, last thing is time. We have to give God time. I'm not going to tell you there's a certain length of time. Oh, you need to be in your Bible studying for at least an hour of a day. Because you can break those hours down. I don't care if it's 15 minutes, 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Here, there. He commands us to pray without ceasing. So we know that if we want to get close to him, if we want to seek him, and it says to seek him diligently, that we have to, we need time to do that. So we do need to set a, a, a point, some time in our day to seek him. So in all of this that we have seen, that we are saying, God is saying, Reach out to me first. Make me your first choice. So instead of, so instead of calling around for loans, I'm just going to say if we want a car, instead of calling around for loans, saying, oh, who going to be able to give me this? Oh, my credit bad. Oh, man, I, I had a repossession or, a for, yeah, a repossession on the car. I'm trying to figure out who going to do it. All we got to do is call Jesus. Call him first because he knows the creditor that's going to allow you to get that credit. Just because GMC said no, don't mean that this private loan officer is going to say yeah. So we have to seek God. Some of us are wondering why we haven't came up with business ideas yet or why you don't have your lunch date yet for your business because we have yet to seek him. And we just talked about it. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in our plans. What we coming up with, the ideas that we have, that we haven't sought the Lord. 
We haven't diligently sought him. We haven't sought him with his whole heart to say, Lord, when do you want me to start? What business do you want me to do that is going to bless your people? Because it's not for me. Because he's going to bless us with the money in the midst of it. He said, all these things shall be added. But I need you to seek me so that I can direct your path. So I can let you know what it is that you want to do. Because our thoughts and our ways are far from his. So we can be thinking one thing, but he letting you know, hey, this is what I want you to do. This is what I delight in to do. This is what I know. If you put your hands to it, this is what's going to prosper. Not what you're thinking. So we have to seek him. We have to think about that. Lord, and, and for those who want to be business owners or who are trying to start seeking them, start seeking them and be patient. We have to wait. The blessing is in the wait. We have to wait and we have to have our ears open and attentive to see what it exactly is that the Lord is saying. Some of us have unpaid bills and wondering why, why we haven't, why my bills not paid? I'm saved, you know, my life's getting cut off. Are you seeking the Lord first? And in seeking God, tithing. Tithing is a part of seeking him because he says he'll open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. He'll rebuke the devour for your sake. So tithe, put, he says, seek ye first. So you need to tithe first before you do anything. And then you won't have no lack. You will be prosperous. But if you pay your bills first, you take care of other stuff first and you find yourself broke. Oh, why? I'm a living witness. I pay my tithes first and I be like, how I got all that done? What? I still got some money? I don't care if it's a dollar, two dollars. It don't be that. God bless. He, he do a little better than that. But this is how he operates. He's strategic. He's letting you know. We not worrying about no bills. We not worrying about that because he said he'll supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. So why we worrying about something that he already has the power to take care of. The cat on the hill, thousand hills belongs to him. So if it all belongs to him, then what we worrying about it for? So we have to seek him first. And that's, uh, So true. Yes, ma'am. That's a part of seeking time. You got to seek him with your time. Thank you for that, sister. Some of us also need healing in our bodies. But where's our faith? We got to seek him. We got to seek him for faith or seek him to know what it is that I need to do to get healed because he already paid it all. He already died on the cross for our sins, but there's something that he wants us to do. He wants us to seek him. We can't just, oh, God, you know, I got this ache and this pain, Lord, heal my body. No, you need to go. You need to seek God. You need to see what it is that he wants you to do. He might want you to go to a chiropractor. He might not. You 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 have to seek him to find out what it is that he need, he might want you to call up Sister uh, Kim to pray for you. Because that just might what you need. Two or three, ask anything in my name, it shall be given unto you. So that might, might be what you need to do. So we have to seek him. We have to have faith. Some of us, we ask God for things, you know, and we just ask him to ask him or ask him because it's what we know. Let me ask him, and you know, he'll give it to me. But we don't have that full faith. We think, oh, you know, let me ask him, you know, hope I don't get diabetes. But it's, it runs in the family. So I know I'm probably going to get it. But let me pray about it. No, we're in a new kingdom. We're in a new family. 
So just because my daddy and my mom and my sister and my uncle got it, guess what? I won't have it because I'm in a new family. I'm going to operate my faith. I didn't sought the Lord. And in my seeking, he's giving me the scriptures. He's letting me know that by his stripes, we are healed. Healing is the children's bread. So I'm going to go on that. I'm not going to go. When I go to the doctor's office, I'm not lying. They be like, do your family, is there history? Uh, No, because there's no history with Jesus. And that's the family I'm in. I'm in the kingdom of the Lord. When we're seeking him first, we're seeking the kingdom of God, right? And his righteousness. We're not seeking the kingdom of the Brown family. We're not seeking the kingdom of the Moody family. We're not seeking the kingdom of the Thibodeaux. We're seeking the kingdom of God. So that stuff don't belong to me. I'm operating in my faith and know that, yes, God, you going to heal me. So question, and we all, we all, we all must then. <laughs> question. So when we, when have you ever been able to get something out of something that you haven't put anything into? Do you understand what I'm saying? When have you put something into something that you have? Let me give you an example. So can you go to your refrigerator and pour you a glass of water from an empty pitcher? You ain't going to get nothing out of it. You didn't fill that pitcher up with water. Guess what? It's common sense. But I'm trying to drive it home. There's no water coming out that pitcher. You're going to be thirsty. Fill up your pitchers. Can you pump water from a well that's dry? Can you turn on a light in your house that no power is running to? Go flip that switch. You don't pay that bill and see what's going to happen. Ain't no light coming on. We want God, we want God to bless us with spouses that are nice, sweet, loving, but are you? So you want him to provide you with something that you're not even? Are you loving? Are you sweet? Are you kind to the people that you are around? So how are you going to expect to get something that you're not giving with friends? Do you expect to have a friend that's always giving to you, pouring into you? They the only person talking, you never pouring into them. They always buying you gifts or giving you something you think y'all going to be friends long? I don't know about in this world. Not gonna happen. You gotta pour in if you want something out. So, have you ever been able to go to a bank and withdraw some money from your account that you haven't put nothing into? Because I've got yet to see it happen. You might try to go up to that ATM and press them buttons, some money might come out, but it ain't yours. So, you better watch out because they do have cameras. <laughs> it's the same way we go. We try to use him like he's an ATM, trying to make all these withdrawals with insufficient funds, asking him for all these things, and we have not made any deposit, mean, meaning we are not seeking him. We are trying to withdraw things from him, and he's saying, insufficient funds, because I told you what? To seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. But what are you doing? You asking me stuff for stuff, but you haven't seeked me. So guess what? What they do? Denied or what did it say? Insuffic yeah, insufficient funds. You you can't get you can't get nothing. Because he, he he made it plain. When you do this, then shall I. Shall these things be added unto you? So in closing, God desires to do so much for his children. He desires to do so much for us. He wants to love on us. He wants to bless us with the desires of our heart. He wants us to be successful, have business, have nice cars, nice clothes, beautiful hair, you know, good spouses. Everything that we can even think of or imagine, God wants to provide. And he's given us his, he has given us his instructions. And all we have to do is seek him. And we shall have the desires of our heart. 
Amen. So that's what the God, God has given to me. Um, just a reminder um, before we close, um, the third Saturday of each month, um, we do have the prayer breakfast. Um, I'll give an announcement as to where we will be because um, sometimes it'll be indoors, uh, but it will be the third Saturday of every month unless something comes up and I'll let you guys know uh, what date I will substitute for. So as we close out in prayer, Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for this time that you have allowed us, Lord God, to be in your presence, oh God, to learn more of you, to find out what it is that you want us to do, how you want us to live, Lord God. We pray that your word falls on good ground as your word, as your word has said, Lord God. We know that it will fall on good grounds. So we just pray, Lord God, that somebody has ate, Lord God, from your words, oh God, and has been filled on today, Father God. We pray, Lord God, that your people, Lord God, begin to seek you, oh God, in the name of Jesus for what it is that we want for you, Lord God. Let us follow your instructions that you have given us. You have given us this word, this holy word, Lord God, to guide us through this life, Lord God, while we are here on earth. Basic basic instructions before leaving the earth is what you have given us, Lord God. So let us study. Let us get into this word and learn what it is that you will have us to do so that we can be prosperous, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. If anybody that does not know the Lord, all they have to do is believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins confess with their mouth, Lord God, and believe it in their heart, and they shall be saved. So if you can say that and confess that, you too can be saved and filled and begin to be filled with his Holy Spirit. So we thank you and we praise you, God, for everybody that was here on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, God.